to my little friend. You are in our house, bitch. Oh my God! Like I said, I came, I saw, and I talked to him. That match was contested under ECW rules, which means anything goes. My name is C. M. Punk. That's Rob Van Dam. My addiction is wrestling. I want you to know I'm not crying. My eyes are red because I was in the back smoking a joint with Van Dam. I'm straight edge. This ain't WCW. This ain't Monday Night Raw. This ain't SmackDown. This ain't even WWE. This, my friend, is ECW. No, my ponytail, Prince Paul. This is J.D. Jones loves WWE ECW. Get it right next time. Oh yes, mofos. It's true. It's damn true. The greatest show in all of history. J.D. Jones loves WWE. ECW has returned after over four long weeks, over a month. I'm back with the long-awaited fifth episode, okay? Three ain't enough, bitch, because I need five. That is why <laughs> there's a picture of Biggie on the thumbnail. Okay, we're here, I'm, I'm so glad, and um, it, I, I'm actually, it, it's 1 o'clock in the morning I'm recording this, won't be up for maybe an hour later, I don't know, but I, I promised that this episode would be here either yesterday or this morning, and I ain't gonna fail you guys. It's been over 24 hours since I watched this episode, the fifth episode of WWE CW. I, um, I watched it twice. I watched it once, and I watched it again. It took notes. I got my notes here. See if I can uh, <laughs> do this show uh, off of a 24-hour memory. And I was sleepy as hell watching the shit, but it was still pretty awesome. I can't wait to get into it. This has been... One hell of a week here, you know, uh, heading into SummerSlam, I've, I've been posting lots of videos, maybe not lots of videos, but I've been posting some vids, man. Check out uh, the JDDT, uh, my thoughts on Baron Corbin and his failed cash-in at Money in the Bank. You can see my NXT preview and predictions for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3, okay? And you can, um, oh, check out the Outlaw Marcus Black's channel. He posted some vids uh, yesterday. I haven't got a chance to look at them because also posted today was the second season of WWE's Southpaw Regional Wrestling, I absolutely love it. I only got to see maybe uh, two or three of them. I, I met the one with the Butchers, and uh, <laughs> I forgot, I, I think Frank, uh, the Rhino's character, <laughs> he said, uh, we chopping meat, and we beating meat. And I just, I couldn't help myself. That was the one of the funniest things I've heard. <laughs> On a WWE video ever. Okay. T t today was a tumultuous week uh, in, in wrestling. And like WWE wrestling in general, you know. Uh, with Tozawa winning the uh, Cruiserweight Championship on Raw. And Barry Corbin failing a Money in the Bank cash-in. But that ain't what this show's about. This show is about... Diving into the past. Blast from the past. Back to the year 2006. Okay. And we're talking ECW. WWE ECW. Uh, let me get 
my information up so we can talk about it, all right? All right, so it's July 11th, 2006, and we're live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. To get things started with a recap prologue package of what had happened the week prior, you guys all know, uh, unless you didn't watch it or didn't listen to the fourth episode of this show, and I suggest you go back and revisit that, um, unless you rather me just tell you, because that's what I was going to do anyway. Uh, <laughs> what's his face? Big Show, the man, beat Rob Van Dam for the ECW Championship with the assistance of Paul Heyman, who turned on his longtime friend, RVD, and screwed him out of the ECW title. And so they show all of that, and then we get things started. Uh, Paul Heyman comes to the ring, and he ex explains himself. He, he tells us why he did what he did, why he uh, did, uh, why he screwed over RVD and allied himself with uh, the big show. It bit him as the new face of his brand. Instead of an ECW original, a legend, a hardcore legend like Rob Van Dam, chose Big Show. And he said it's because us, the people, the fans, he saw the way that the fans were going to push Rob Van Dam over the edge. Okay? He said they were going to, the RVD chants were going to push Rob Van Dam into an early retirement. So he did what he had to do for the good of ECW, okay? Rob Van Dam apparently was also suspended. Um, that, why? That's anyone's guess. I'm sure uh, you guys can look that up and find out. I think it had something to do with uh, some, something with the Saturday Night Live not happening. Uh, Saturday Night main event not happening. And, uh. I, I don't know all the details, so I'm not going to talk about it. But he was suspended. Uh, Paul Heyman announced that. He said uh, he he was, Paul Heyman was the savior, the, the essentially the Jesus Christ of ECW. And he crucified one of his uh, most important relationships, his friendship with Van Damme for the good of, Rob Van, uh, of ECW, which was... One of the biggest sacrifices, he says, anybody could make. My boy Paul, who, by the way, was wearing his ponytail, his skullet ponytail, and a nice single braid. Anyway, <laughs> he said with his uh, wisdom, and with his leadership, he was going to uh, usher ECW into the promised land whatever that may be and so then he leaves but the segment doesn't end there because the cameras oh I, I forgot to mention this is the first time we see like the uh, SWAT team police guard guys that uh, escort Paul Heyman it's the first time I think this is the first time I, I, I don't remember seeing him in, the pre in uh, previous episodes so I'm going to say this is the first time we see them and so him and the police escort SWAT team guys, they go backstage. Right? They walk backstage and they're walking uh, down through the hall, passing by different people, roadkill the Amish guy, some two other guys I couldn't identify, and other wrestlers, and it's dead silent. You can hear a pin drop. They're all nervous because Paul Heyman has apparently gone off the deep end. He's betrayed ECW, you know? But all in the name of uh, getting ECW to the next level. He's become so obsessed with ECW. He's betrayed what it's really all about. You know, it's it's about going out there, pin it all on the line every night. And he 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 didn't see that for the future of ECW. And so that's why he screwed Paul. He screwed Ron Van Dam. Anyway, he's walking backstage, and he passes by. Well, he stops by um, 
an ECW hardcore legend, my, my favorite ECW guy, Tommy Dreamer. And we, if, if you know anything about Paul Heyman or ECW, you know he is, he was at least, I don't know if he is, but he was best friends, a, a very close associate with Tommy Dreamer. And t Tommy Dreamer essentially uh, tells Paul Heyman what the entire locker room is thinking. What is wrong with you? What is the what is with this new Paul Heyman? Uh, why'd you why'd you screw Rob Van Dam and that sort of stuff? And Paul tells him, I've been meaning uh, to talk to you about this, and I want to find the right time to talk to you about this, but <laughs> there's simply no time right now because you have a match. Apparently, this was an unscheduled match because. Uh, Tommy Dreamer was wearing, like, your uncle's red shirt, but down, uh, short sleeve shirt, like, your uncle's shirt, it's red, he, he wasn't ready to wrestle, he didn't know he had a match, but he went out there anyway, uh, Paul, Paul said he had a match, so he said, what match, and he, he just went out there, and th that's when we get into the next segment, which is the match, he has... He, like, he comes to the ring still pitting the wrist tape on his arm. This is very imp impromptu. Turns out his opponent is the big test who had made his debut the week before. On the fourth episode, I believe. Either the fourth or the third. I, I, haven't, I, I haven't gone back and seen that. And it's been over four weeks since I've done this show. And watched an episode of ECW. So you have to forgive me. If I get the timing wrong. Regarding stuff that happened. In the third and fourth episode. Probably the second as well. But I think Tessa just made his debut. On the third episode. Fourth episode I mean. <laughs> and he's his opponent. Tess comes out. He's big. Sweaty. And I'm not accusing anybody of anything. But watching the match. You can see. Well, that Jinder Mahal-esque back knee on test. And, you know, I, 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 I'm, like I said, I'm not accusing anybody of doing anything. But I know what I saw, at least. And so they have a match. And, you know, test is huge. And he's taking it to um, Tommy Dreamer, you know. Ha about halfway through the match, toward the end, Tommy does, he picks up and starts just going to town with, with uh, old-fashioned blows to the face, punching him and whatnot. He spills outside to the ring for a minute. Can't remember if anything significant happened. I don't think so. No nothing really happened <laughs> outside the ring. So, yeah. This this was an actual short match. A, a, a lot of... Not a lot of stuff happened on this show because so much time was taken into the main event and into a Paul Heyman's opening promo. And it's a 45 minute show, so yes, this was, wasn't was a lot of, not a lot of important things happened and nothing significant happened in this match until the end where, mm, what happened in the end? Oh. Paul, uh, Tommy Dreamer, he went for the DDT, his his DDT finisher. In my my head, it was it was the, the uh, gut kick he used leading into it, it was kind of weird looking. Uh, it, it doesn't matter, I guess, but it, it caught my eye as just being really off. Like he 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 tapped the guy with his foot. <laughs> he just tapped him with his foot. And the guy just bent over. You could tell, like, he just did. It was off. But he, um, Tess reversed it. And then Tommy went for the Dreamer Driver, which Tess reversed. He didn't, like, he grabbed the ropes because he's pretty tall, so he could reach the ropes pretty easily while on Tommy's shoulders. And so he managed to roll up. Tommy for a schoolboy pin. Ah, look at, he, he's got the Jinder Mahal back knee, and he got Tommy with a Jinder Mahal roll-up. 
but he had his feet used at the ropes for leverage, and the ref didn't see it, so he didn't beat Tommy clean. And so that was that match. Let me see what, what happened next, man. Before they go to commercial, they uh, have a backstage room of uh, Kelly get ready for Kelly's expose. You guys know how I feel about that. Not going to bother complaining or anything. Uh, it's pr it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't give a shit. But it's double trouble this week because Candice Michelle from Raw is also on. So we're going to have the both of them dance this week. And she says, Candice Michelle, she says to Kelly, Kelly, when we go out there and perform tonight, I'm going to make this very extreme. And then they go to commercial. All right. So when we come back from commercial, we get to see the fortune teller, tarot card woman, whatever you want to call her, Ariel. And she uh, has some cards. She says the future holds blood. And we get to see Kevin Thorne, the vampire. He's finally in the arena and not outside. And he spits blood into the camera lens, but it kind of misses, so it doesn't cover the camera lens. <laughs> and he, he shows, like, he, he uh, leans over. Fuck it, I don't care. Yeah, it's Kevin Thornton Ariel. That's it. <laughs> so, Kelly's expose begins with Candace Michelle. There's actually no stripping in this one, just straight dancing, but they're not really wearing much uh, to begin with. And so this goes on. That like, this was actually pretty long, uh, this dance. But eventually, of course, Mike Knox, Big Mike Knox, who's apparently dating the exhibitionist Kelly Kelly, comes in with a towel, covers Kelly Kelly up, and takes her away. Uh, which just leaves Candace Michelle without a partner. Candace Michelle, who I might add, is actually uh, pretty damn hot. Even compared to Kelly Kelly. Looks better than Kelly Kelly in my opinion. But. Uh, before. Um, Mike Knox can take her backstage. He's. He's a. Uh, interrupted. By the sand man. Who doesn't. He's not beating on some jobber's ass today. He's taking on an actual. Uh, name in ECW. Mike Knox. And he essentially just wails on him, beats the living jelly out of the guy <laughs> with the cane, and um, he hits him in the head, and he falls through this, uh, the strip stage thing that Kelly does her dance on, and he's gone, and maybe, I hope, that will lead to a Sandman Mike Knox shoot, I don't know what's up in the future, but that would be cool, you know, because they're not really doing anything at this point. In time, you know, Mike Knox, he's obviously struggling with the problem of having an exhibitionist for a girlfriend, a hot exhibitionist for a girlfriend, and Sandman is just beating weird gimmick people with canes. Like, first there was the zombie, then there was, uh, not Luch, the, the, the uh, Macho Libre, I believe his name was. Yeah, Macho Libre. And then that preacher guy, I don't know what he did in the fourth episode, actually. Oh, the, the uh, dancer guy, Big Dick Johnson. And so maybe he could get an actual feud or something going on. That'd be cool. Um, next, yeah, they, they show a tail of the tape. You know what that is? For the main event of the evening, which is Ric Flair, the nature boy, Ric Flair, 16-time world champion, challenging for his 17th world championship championship uh, at the expense of the big show, ECW championship, in the main event in an extreme rules match. And I'm looking at the, the tail of the tape and the stats. The big show is legit one inch short of a foot taller than Ric Flair. And he's over twice his size. Ric Flair weighed 243 pounds. Big Show weighed 500. Uh, actually, Joey Styles said he weighed 507. 
So that's even that's even more. Big Show is also the first and only man to have won the WCW Championship, the WWE Championship, and the ECW Cha uh, World Heavyweight Championship. And actually, Big Show won one of his DCW, uh, WCW Championships against Ric Flair, I believe in sometime 95 or 96. And so they, they have a prior match. And so I can't wait to get to that, but the, uh, that's the main event. There's still a little more to get to. CM Punk, we get a CM Punk promo. He's talking about how he's straight edge. I don't misunderstand him and his tattoos. He's not just some kid with a bunch of ink on his arms. Every tattoo means something. He holds up his hands, his fists. You know, you know under his knuckles it says straight edge. I believe that's what it says. <laughs> Straight edge. And then he has a tattoo. says honor. And another one of Rosie the Riveter. War against the machine. And he says he's coming soon. To fight in ECW. Can't wait for that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, big CM Punk fan. Well, maybe not anymore. I, uh, me and my, my uh, status on liking CM Punk has kind of waxed and winged over the years, especially now that he's not even wrestling anymore. I don't give a damn about him. And all the, the every every couple months there's some rumor that uh, CM Punk signed with WWE. I, I stopped caring about it a long time ago. I won't care until I see him at a show, maybe in the audience, maybe in the ring. I won't care until then. Anyway, we get uh, our second match of the night. It's the homicidal, genocide, uh, homicidal, suicidal, genocidal, um, Sabu. <laughs> and he's against Justin Credible. They've also had prior matches in uh, ECW, the 90s original ECW. You, should, you might want to go back and see those. This match is really short. Uh, it actually begins with just incredible. <laughs> on on the, um, he's the, the the one on top in the beginning. He reverses like a front chop block and just goes to work. But I guess I wasn't paying attention because just somewhere along the line, uh, guy starts wailing on him. Sabu. This match ends in a DQ when Sabu pits him through a table. Pits, um. Just incredible through a table. And it ends in a DQ, but uh, apparently DQs in ECW, fuck it. They're pretty much wins anyway. Because even though Sabu lost, uh, as soon as the bell rang, they began playing his music. He put a nail in his mouth and he left with his hands held high. While um, Just Incredible was still in the wreckage outside the ring of a broken table. I don't know what the fuck that was all about, was, but um, I guess it was just, you know, fuck it. I'm Sabu, bitch. I don't, I have no real opinion on that. I thought it was just weird. We get a promo, a short promo, like a vignette, I guess, of Balls Mahoney. <laughs> it's full of puns. Because his name is Balls Mahoney. He's like, I know a lot of people of you might... Uh, a lot of you people might laugh when you hear that name, but I like it because it's who I am. Balls to the wall, craziest nuts, that kind of thing. And I can't wait to see him get to the ring, you know? He, he looks like an extreme Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> like if Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Mick Foley had a dream child, he'd get Balls Mahoney. I, I, I'm pretty sure actually the guy's dead. <laughs> Right now, at least. But he's coming soon. Gonna see him in action in the coming weeks, I reckon. And now we're getting ready for the main event match. But first, we get a promo from Ric Flair. If you've seen one Ric Flair promo, as they say with Bray Wyatt promos, you've seen them all. 
<laughs> essentially. Uh, he, it's really long-winded. He talks about, you know, he's chasing that 17th title, and he's going to get it from the big show, the ECW title. It's not a title he ever wanted until now. And if you fuck up, Big Show, I'm going to get you. He, he also has some words to say to Mick Foley. The guys had a match, Ric Flair and Mick Foley. They had a two out of three falls match at Vengeance, uh, which uh, I, I, I didn't cover, but um, it, it was... I, I talked about it a little, goddammit. Fuck. And so um, Ric Flair, he won two falls, but apparently... Mick Foley really fucked him up in the match. And then Mick Foley... Uh, so, Ric Flair wanted to rematch. Mick Foley said, fuck no. <laughs> so, uh, Ric Flair was talking shit about Mick Foley. And... Yeah, that's it. Fuck. They go to commercial. We come back. We see... Shannon Moore. You guys don't know who that is. It's hard to describe him. You want to look them up, I guess. Shannon Moore's coming to ECW soon. So we got we got three guys. CM Punk, Balls Mahoney, ECW original, I might add. And Shannon Moore, you're going to want to look for in the upcoming weeks. So now it's time for the main event of the evening. It's Ric Flair versus The Big Show. Extreme Rules ECW Championship. I, I, oh, yeah. This match is, uh, because you guys may be wondering why the hell is Ric Flair getting an ECW title shot. Uh, Ric Flair's on Raw, talking shit to Mick Foley. All of a sudden, Big Show and Paul Heyman essentially come and challenge him to come to uh, ECW the next day. And he accepts. That's 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 what happens. That's where we are now. And so, like I said, world title match, Extreme Rules, Flair versus Big Show. This is actually a pretty infamous match because just how brutal it ends up being in the end. Match gets started. Can't remember what the fuck what was happening in the beginning. It's pretty, you know, the regular shit, essentially. Things don't start to pick up until the blood started to spill. And so, Big Show's going to work on what's his face, Ric Flair. And then he starts hitting him with the headbutts. And he hits him with one good one. Lays Ric Flair out. And they, they uh, cut to Ric Flair on the floor about maybe four seconds later. And this guy, as you can see, he's busted open. Busted open. Or cut open? Maybe. Let you be the judge <laughs> there. We, we know about Ric Flair. How he can bleed on a dime. Anyway. Um, so they, they, yeah, they continue the match, and Ric Flair is really fucked up. Like this, this it, I've never seen him. I, I never seen him bleed this badly, really, because he's looking like he came from uh, the movie Carrie. You know, this guy's covered in blood. We got blood all over Big Show's hands. He's not even trying to get it off, not wiping it off, nothing. He's just going to town on Ric Flair. And uh, Ric Flair, he's in the latter part of his career, you know, uh, as far as WWE goes. You know, it's 2006. He retires in 2008. This guy's, I don't know how old he is, but he's hes going to work. And he's getting worked on pretty badly. Uh, there was a, a, a military uh, gor a gorilla press. Looked so awful. Uh, mm -hmm. Seemed just just essentially old elderly man being dropped 10 feet in the air by the big show oh man you have to see it to believe it but uh rick flair he eventually oh yeah he just takes um he takes what i i, I call the, the rick flair version of brock lesnar suplex city low blow boulevard and just starts clocking <laughs> the big show in the groin area, the testicles. And it, since it's extreme rules, he doesn't care. Like, very blatant low blows. It just gives him an opportunity to catch his breath a bit. And he goes to the ring. He goes outside of the ring. 
gets a trash can filled with foreign objects and weapons. Uh, one of which being a, a barbed wire covered baseball bat. He takes this bat, bam, nails Big Show in the head with it, and then proceeds to grind his face in it. Ew, this pain and torture. Um, and so it opens Big Show up, and I, 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 I don't know if that, I, I don't know if it was actually the barbed wire uh, bat, or you know, like Flair probably uh, somebody slipped him a blade or something. I don't know. I couldn't tell because Big Show, uh, his cut, it, it wasn't across his forehead or nothing like that. It was almost by uh, his right temple, so it was like the side of his head, pretty much. And so, it ended up making for, like, a, a pretty weird sight, because he's, like, bleeding really profusely, but, like, legit only down one side of his face. Like, half of his face is covered in blood. So, this guy's looking, he's looking like Harvey Dent. <laughs> and getting uh, wailed on by chair shots from Ric Flair. Ric Flair just picking up, he picks up a chair, starts destroying Big Show, but it looks kind of off, because you can see Big Show, like, breaks himself and kind of stick his head out. For each individual uh, chair shot, and I, I, I'm not gonna complain about that because the guy's taking chair shots to the head. You wanna uh, protect yourself at all times, and so that that lays Big Show out the chair shots <laughs> to the head. And so, uh, what's his face? Wait, uh, wait, those weren't chair shots. I'm sorry, those were trash can shots. He was hitting with. With the trash can the whole time and Big Show was still gonna say, I'm sorry. It's two in the morning. Okay, I'm gonna be a little fucked up on this show today. I won't do this again to you. Uh, six episode, <laughs> it'll be better, guys. I'm sorry. I, I still gotta do the SummerSlam predictions. Fuck. But anyway, he's in him with the trash can. That lays him out. So he gets a bag, uh, unties the knot on it, spills it across the ring. So, uh, silver thumbtacks, you know, that Mick Foley would use. The thumbtacks that <laughs> uh, Dean Ambrose laid Jericho out across on. <laughs> that was funny. But this, this, um, this one's, this, this is horrible. This is, this match is far from funny, okay? I, had, I watched this uh, show twice. So I saw this match twice, and it was just as hard to watch the second time as it was the first time, I'll be honest. But if, if, if you, if you want to see, like, a, a really, like, blood hardcore match, it's not even that hardcore, but just guys, like, really pitting each other through pain, it's this match. It's the J July 11th <laughs> ECW match 2006. If you want to look that back up, feel free. Anyway, so he lets out the thumbtacks. Get Big Show's getting up. He's coming too. And then bam, that's when he gets in with a chair shot. Bam, gets in with a chill shot again. Hits him one more time. Ric Flair nails him one more time. Topples like a fucking tree, man. Right back forth, back first, right onto the thumbtacks. <laughs> and this is the this is the, probably the funniest part of the match, I guess. Big Show, like, gets up almost immediately, and, like, the, the, the his facial expression is like, what the fuck? Like, this, this <laughs> sudden pain, he's like, he, like, freaks out, <laughs> and just clotheslines the shit out of Ric Flair, picks him up, chokes, slams him, like, he's ready to get this match over with, like, now, but those dumb tacks are just, that was over the line, choke slams him. Pits him in the Japanese sleeper back break a hold. And <laughs> he beat Yankee, does a backbreaker, keeps it on, tightens him up, and he wins by submission. Uh, Ric Flair passes out. And so Big Shell, he's like, fuck. Picks him back up, picks Ric Flair up, who's essentially limp now, because he just was pit to sleep by the Japanese sleeper. Pit, and he just flings him across the ring. But this, uh, on the thumbtacks, but Ric Flair doesn't fall back first. 
he falls on his belly on the thumbtacks, which makes for probably the most gruesome sights I've ever seen in wrestling. Like, I don't watch a lot of hardcore shit. So this is probably the worst thing I've ever seen, in recent memory at least. An old man falling uh, face first on a, on, a, on a bed of thumbtacks. Who's already busted open, I do. So the, the match is over, Big Show, he gets the hell out of there. He, he retains the belt, he's the champion, uh, ECW champion, he gets the hell out of there. And so it, uh, what's his face? Ric Flair is laying there on a bunch of tacks, a bloody mess. They f finally, the uh, medical staff, they come, they, they come get him. They flip him over. You can see the damage has just been dealt. Thumbtacks all over this poor guy, man. There's thumbtacks in his kneecap, okay? Because you know Ric Flair, those knee pads he wears, they're not really knee pads because they don't cover his knee. They only cover like just below his knee. So it's almost like an extension of the boot or something. I don't know. So his, his, his knee pads, his knees, his knee, uh, kneecaps are always exposed. And so there's like legit <coughs> thumbtacks in this guy's kneecap. Really hard to watch. They, they carry him out. This, this guy's been really beaten. Take it to the limit at this match. They get him out of the ring. Camera zooms in on the back of his head, the back, right on the back of his head with the hair, back of his head. You can see a thumbtack just lodged in there. What the fuck, man? Just awful. Ric Flair got fucked this match. I'm telling you. So they they help him out of there. His music hits. So they're they're playing the Ric Flair thing as he leaves because he he he, he walked out hero. No, I forget. He just got. It was hard to watch, the, the, him walking out of there. So it was kind of sad, you know. This guy just got really fucked. This guy was old, man. I'm telling you. And uh, what what happened today? If uh, and what happened to Ric Flair then? If if Ric Flair could take that much of a beating, and still keep going, like that, he he challenged Mick Foley, okay. So he wasn't even he didn't take a day off, like a week or so off after that match. So for him to take that punishment and go go full time on the clock the next day, I I, I know that he's gonna pull through with whatever uh I he's in the hospital for now. I, I, I don't know all the details with his current ailment, but I know he'll get through it if he could survive what happened to him on the, this episode of ECW. Only, only, only about 11 years ago. I know I say only 11 years ago. That's a long ass time. But man, that's the end of the show. We're gonna see what's his face sometime soon. CM Punk, Balls Mahoney, and Shannon Moore. Probably see Kevin Thorne soon. I don't know. I, I don't know what the fuck's in the next episode of ECW. But you'll find out. Right here on the next episode of J.D. Jones Loves WWE CW. I'm not going to bother getting that outro on. Because, yeah. Make sure if you guys haven't subscribed, <laughs> you subscribe. I'm so tired right now, I'm sorry. Please share this, this show. Subscribe to the channel. I know I just said that, but yeah. Subscribe to the channel. You know, hit the red button. Say subscribe. Tap the bell so you get the notifications whenever I post new content, whatever that is. Because I am going to be doing my SummerSlam predictions sometime today, Saturday. Uh, or maybe Sunday morning-ish. I don't know. I, 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 of course, want to have it up before SummerSlam, of course. I'm also probably going to be doing a SummerSlam aftermath video sometime after SummerSlam. Maybe it's the, that night of, or maybe it's the day after. I don't know if I'm going to do an NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 um, aftermath video. We'll wait and see. Depends on what happens that show. Like, if something big happens, like Adam Cole, uh, he, Adam Cole uh, doesn't just wave in the crowd, but he gets involved in the pay-per-view, or if Roddy... Roderick Strong interferes in the main event, or something big happens, like Oscar's streak is broken. I will do an aftermath video. 
But if it's if nothing if significant happens, don't count on it. So I'll see you guys very soon, I reckon, depending on what happens at Takeover, and I'll I'll see you for my SummerSlam predictions. I can't wait to get to that. There's a lot of matches on that card. We're gonna talk about each and every one of them in more detail than um in more detail than the NXT predictions and preview because I actually know what the hell's going on on the main roster. I'm gonna be honest, a lot of that talk that I was talking in uh NXT, I was talking out my ass, man. I don't know what the fuck's going on NXT. Like I said, this week's episode was the first episode I watched in a very long time. So Tune in for that. Make sure you watch that. Make sure you watch this. Of course, you if, if you're hearing this, you watch this. I'll have the sixth episode up sometime soon. Expect it within the next week at least. Once again, like, comment, subscribe, share. Thanks. See you guys another time. Goodbye. I'm sorry. I forgot. I'm sorry. I just started using Twitter, so if you guys want to check me out, you can check me out on Twitter at, get ready for this, JD underscore Jizzlestar, that's right, that's my username thing, so, <laughs> I'm also on Google Plus, of course, at JD Jones, I'm always there, and check out uh, Outlaws, Outlaw Marcus Black's YouTube channel. Like I said, I haven't got to see his videos yet. I, I don't know when I'll watch them. He released some on Dolph Ziggler. Making WWE great again. The Dolph Ziggler push. Dolph Ziggler is kind of in a rough spot now. I wanna. If you want to know what Oscar has to say about that. I'm not Oscar. What the fuck is his name? Outlaw has to say about that. Take a look at his channel. Like what you see. Do him a favor and subscribe. I reckon. Do comment on his videos or something. You know, If you like what you're getting here. You're going to love what us, what Outlaw has to offer. Once again, goodbye. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, goodbye.